To get more than 2,000 likes at this videos we will upload more patriotic news. Just in. Trump, Republican go on deems, I tease a historic triumph details. The election of President Trump was really an amusement evolving occasion. Not just have the authoritative needs changed significantly from what we encountered under Obama, however so has everything else from outside approach, to a residential arrangement, to legal arrangements. With regards to legal arrangements, President Trump has the chance to roll out improvements that keep going for a considerable length of time, these are lifetime arrangements, recollect. Accordingly, his election was a calamity for the liberals since it implied that Hillary's parade of dynamic, Radical legal candidates will never get off the beginning line. The most the Democrats will have the capacity to do is deferral and block Trump chose people. Yet Republicans are having none of that. Congressperson Ted Cruz has officially gone off on the moderate moving of radicals, and now all of Capitol Hill is prepared to move. Judge Neil Gorsuch will be affirmed. The Senate delay decides that basically requires 60 votes to pass a bill or a presidential assignment is a piece of a long-standing custom of the Senate being all the more deliberative body that takes as much time as is needed in choosing issues. The odd thing is that the man is requiring 60 votes to end wrangle about and send an issue to the floor for a vote can be changed by a basic dominant part. This is what is known as the atomic alternative. It might be going to be utilized. Via Fox News. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, DN.Y, and Senator Elizabeth Warren, DMAS, both called Tuesday for a postponement on any vote to confirm Gorsuch to the nation's highest court. It is unseemly to be moving forward so fast on confirming a Supreme Court justice with a lifetime appointment while this big gray cloud of an FBI investigation hangs over the presidency, Schumer said. That remark is fairly diverting. Considering such thinking would have blocked Bill Clinton from making any legal arrangements amid his eight years in the White House. You know, with the exception of amid those uncommon bits of time between examinations of debasement. However, Gorsuch will get affirmed somehow. That's where the so called nuclear option comes in. If majority Republicans change the threshold, Gorsuch could be approved with a simple majority of 51 votes. The nuclear option was first used by Democrats for circuit court judicial appointments in 2013 and top Republicans, including President Trump, have indicated for weeks it's a serious option in order to get Gorsuch on the court. If we end up with that gridlock, I would say, if you can, Mitch, go nuclear, Trump said February 1. All things considered. Gorsuch is prominently qualified and the Democrats were the first to utilize the device for lower court arrangements, so it just comes down to whether the Democrats need to compel the issue or not. At the end of the day, the majority of this is political theater as the Supreme Court anticipates its most up-to-date part. We are outrageously tired of Democrats pursuing a superfluous war against Trump and his organization. Get over it, liberals. You lost. Furthermore, learn to expect the unexpected. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Massive news Thray Gowdy just made a huge point about the wiretapping investigation. Thray Gowdy spoke in Face the Nation hosting John Dickerson that he is disappointed that Democrats aren't outraged enough over the unmasking of private citizens. In relation to Russia's interference in the 2016 U.S. elections and the investigation, Thray Gowdy told the American public that he is disappointed that the Democrats are not more outraged about the private citizens' unmasking. I understand we collect U.S. citizens. The South Carolina Republican continued. But we do not read about those citizens on the front page of the Washington Post and the New York Times. Gowdy also stated that the felonious dissemination of classified information is the only thing we know for sure that is a crime, and it sure would be nice if we all showed the same level of interest in that. Thray Gowdy made some good points about the wiretapping on this interview that the mainstream media did not highlight, so be sure to share this post because Gowdy should not be silenced. Wow. Ted Koppel got an epic response from Sean Hannity after he tried to discredit him. Ouch. Ted Koppel had a feud with Sean Hannity this Sunday on Fox News. He told him, that he is bad for America. 
Hannity replied on this on CBS Sunday morning and told Koppel to give some credit to the American people. He said, We have to give some credit to the American people that they are somewhat intelligent and that they know the difference between an opinion show and a news shot. You are cynical. Do you think we are bad for America? You think I am bad for America? On this Koppel responded, Yeah. In the long haul I think you and all these opinion shows are. Hannity said that he was sad that Koppel felt this way. On this Koppel replied, No, you know why? Because you are very good at what you do. You have attracted people who are determined that ideology is more important than the facts. Hannity is a known supporter of President Donald Trump as he always defends him on Fox News. He defended Trump even this Friday, when he said that Trump is not to blame for the failed repealing on Obamacare. He added, after seven long years of Republicans promising to repeal and replace Obamacare, not getting the job done is unacceptable. This comes right after Paul Ryan pulled the Republican health care bill, giving Donald Trump a major defeat. He concluded, let me be very clear here. This is not President Trump's failure. The president went above and beyond, did everything in his power, to get this bill across the finish line. Breaking Paul Ryan will be replaced, guess who takes his seat? The entire healthcare fiasco has been quite a bad thing for the Republicans. It was pulled right before yesterday's voting. There was not enough support needed to be able to pass. Now, it seems more and more like Paul Ryan may be resigning his Speaker of the House position. President Trump has been mostly silent about the most recent revelations including the unsuccessful bill. But his administration did leave this as an answer to Paul Ryan, this is one more example of the staff not working suitably for the President and the faulty Speakership of Ryan. This pops into question yet again the Speaker's determination to support Donald Trump and his plan. Speaker Ryan showed today that he does not have the best intentions of the President at heart. He sold out the President and proved that his word can be taken with a grain of salt. There is only one thing left to do that ought to be taken to move beyond this catastrophe and that is the quick replacement of Paul Ryan from the Speakership. The removal of the Speaker has to be voted upon which means Trump is unable to just fire him from his position. Nevertheless, if President Trump could gather enough support for a particular person to replace Ryan, he could have a real shot. That is where Thray Gowdy steps in. He has been tearing it up in the hearings concerning Comey and the FBI. He might be a brilliant replacement for Ryan. He is already familiar with the ins and outs of the House, and has proven that he is prepared to follow President Trump. If you think Thray Gowdy should replace Paul Ryan as Speaker of the House share this. Finally. You are fired Trump administration canning every ex-Hillary and ex-Obama person at every department. Amazing news. It's time for some major house cleaning, and Trump's Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is wasting no time making important staffing changes in the State Department and every other department. Staffers in the offices of Deputy Secretary of State for Management and Resources as well as Counselor were shown the door Thursday. The majority of those let go were big players, from the building's seventh floor, which is a symbolically important sign to the rest of the diplomatic corps that their new boss will be handling things different than the last one, reports New York Post. Tillerson made these staff changes when he returned from his first foreign trip, he was attending a G20 meeting in Bonn, Germany. As part of the transition from one administration to the next, we continued to build out our team. The State Department is supported by a very talented group of individuals, both Republicans and Democrats, spokesman R.C. Haman said. We are appreciative to any American who dedicates their talents to public, he added. As is standard with every transition, the outgoing administration, in coordination with the incoming one, requested all politically appointed officers submit letters of resignation, a State Department spokesman said after the first round of firings in the State Department at the end of January. IT's official. President Trump makes bold move to shut down Obama's shadow government, this is amazing, details.
Barack Obama figured out how to be one of the most grounded and sharpest liberal elitists. I will give him this title in light of the fact that, not at all like Hillary and McCain, he succeeded the best of them every single liberal follower, and has a huge responsibility for the globalists' motivation and their shadow government. Shadow government, profound state words that help us to remember something pitiless and dark. It is not a trick. Simply look what they did to the USA. These liberals attempted to make an ignorant and dependent country. Simply look what they do, imbecilic little welfare arrangement as opposed to giving employments, mainstream media mentally conditioning rather than through and through freedom and appropriate instruction, LGBT and psychological warfare rather than religion spirituality and peacefulness. That is the thing that they need to do. Donald Trump sees them. He all of a sudden appeared unexpectedly and broke their system. From that minute on, the baffled and urgent liberal elitists attempt to adhere to their shadow government. Obama's remains kept an eye on Trump, that is without a doubt. Comey and the NSA attempted to offer fake stories they said that the Trump Tower had been under reconnaissance because of the nearness of some Russian crowd manager. Decent reason. Toward the finish of Flynn's investigation, it was additionally affirmed that he is clear and guiltless but spied on him anyway just to offer fake news stories to dishonor the president. What's more, once more nothing happens. The liberals dependable escape with their violations. Not anymore. Donald Trump started the final destruction of the liberal deep state. Trump just embedded 16 hand-chosen aides into multiple federal agencies to both monitor and report back on the actions of existing cabinet secretaries. As per Washington Post and affirmed by Angry Patriot Movement, we are glad to report the end of the dirty snake's realm. Drain the swamp. After the risk to stop with that, Trump simply did the inverse. He turns out to be a major warrior and an intense loyalist. Behind the scenes, though, they're on another mission, to monitor cabinet leaders and their top staffs to make sure they carry out the president's agenda and do not stray too far from the White House's talking points told by multiple WH officials with knowledge of the new arrangement to the Washington Post. Trump is going to shut down Obama's shadow government. IT's official. The deep state's towers are falling down the global elite suffers in agony. What do you think about this? Do you support Trump in this? If your answer is hell yes and share this article on your Facebook profile.